quite a long history, but part of his history was during Soviet times where um, the system were completely different way. So it was state distribution and straight planning system where there was no place for the um, actual uh, private initiative to produce uh, the different styles of wine um, for different wineries. So in this stage, during that period, we're actually producing just bulk wine and some uh, brandies. And uh, these wines usually used to be sent to some bottling companies where used to bottle this wine. That was uh, what we've been doing during Soviet times. But um, in uh, 19, 19, 1995, um, the uh, winery was privatized and uh, we took over in 1917, uh, 1997. So from that time, we're starting rebuilding the winery completely. So we actually um, planted 330 hectares of vineyards. And at this stage, we're producing five, even 6.5 million bottles last year. Uh, this year's sales are uh, a bit low. We are down to 10% totally because of COVID. Especially we're down in Georgia locally because um, uh, we had actually no touristic season. And uh, as you know, as you might know, the most of the wines are consumed with guests. So uh, it's a part of the Georgian cult culture to receive guests uh, to uh, create some kind of pleasant atmosphere for them. And mostly the wines are consumed here. And it actually proves the situation when our sales are actually halved during the COVID situation in Georgia. So. Yeah. That's a lot. And what, wh why did you, um, why did you start uh, a career in wine business? Ah, uh, so, uh, yes, I moved to wine business in 1995. Before that I was a, doctor, I was ENT doctor, and uh, by suddenly I changed my, uh, my direction of life and moved to business. And um, it was uh, probably due to the very bad um, situation, economic situation in Georgia, when doctors mm -hmm. actually can't make their living. And I decided to change my lifestyle, change my um, way of professional, um, professional, yes, my profession actually, and I moved to wine. So that was how it happened. It's a long story to tell. Uh, I hope one day everybody can come to our winery and I can privately tell you about, answer your questions and because a lot to tell. That's Very interesting story. Quite interesting. It's quite interesting that you can make um, well, your chances are um, bigger in wine business than as a doctor. I mean, in every year we say if you want to, um, yeah, wine business is it's it's really nice, but it's not something to to make a lot of money with. Uh, yes, yeah, sure, but you know, it it uh, gives you it uh, it presents you a lot of um, horizons. Uh, to reach and a lot of opportunities and a lot of challenges because it's very, very interesting. Especially when we started, there was, as you mentioned previously, wine industry is quite, um, quite young in Georgia while wine history or wine production is quite old. Wine history, wine uh, industry started just lately. And yeah. uh, we had to change everything Everything started from the attitude toward the uh, particular um, grape variety or particular wine style, uh, and also also starting from the attitude of the personal toward their job, what they are doing, and how are they doing, because we had yeah. inherited not uh, we had not quite a good inheritance from Soviet times, so it was very difficult. Mm -hmm. But at, at the same time, it was very, very challenging and it's very interesting. 
uh, when you have a chance uh, to produce and to create something new, something interesting, and it really proves to be interesting. And next year is completely different because of season was different, because of climate or hail or m millions of factors. Like and COVID this year, this also <laughs> a big challenge for us because we need to change somehow our attitude towards business in general because it's my first time I having some kind of this type of conversation tasting online. It's yeah. exceptional. So it's also a challenge. It's also interesting. Yeah, yeah, that's true. It's, 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 it brings us all new opportunities and chances. That's true. So your wines are around all around the world. You have won uh, many awards for your wines and your aim is to produce high quality wines using modern and also traditional uh, winemaking techniques. Um, we can, uh, this is uh, a picture of your winery. Could you tell us uh, what is happening here in short? So uh, this is our main storage, uh, cellar for storage. Uh, what you can see, these are uh, thermally insulated uh, stainless steel tanks capable of the capacity of around 25,000 liters. And um, where we, we have uh, controlled the wine temperature starting from minus four up to, I don't know, any, up to any. So it's, they are very good in terms of um, wine storage as well as fermentation and dif different actions which has been done during the wine uh, fermentation, aging, etc., etc. So this is our main storage. I would say that, I want to say that uh, our total capacity now exceeds 12 million liters. And uh, except old, our inheritance from Soviet time, old Soviet tanks, uh, we have uh, overall temperature control, control in all the tanks. So it's a modern technology. It's a modern technology which enables to produce wine of consistent quality year after year. It's very important. Yeah. So this is the modern technology yes. or do you also call it like European technology? Uh, yes, uh, we, we call it European technology. Um, it's correct because the European way of wine making has been introduced by the uh, one of the uh, Georgian nobleman in 19th century, and it's called European technology. By the way, he invited French winemakers to, mm -hmm. to, to uh, make uh, Georgian wine in European way. Mm -hmm. So this is what we call this European way, absolutely clear, uh, correct, yes. Okay, so it's uh, a lot of temperature controls, a lot of consistency, uh, I guess easy to, to maintain, to clean. So this is one part of, the, of your business. And then we have a picture of one of your sellers, sellers with uh, wooden barrels. Yes. For eating, I guess. So yeah, wooden barrels, yes, yeah. French, French oak barrels, so we have all French oak barrels. Uh, some, some Italian, yes, but the oak is French. Oak is French. Okay. Do you also use Caucasian uh, wood or Slovenian wood or only French and Italian? Yeah, you know, we, we have Caucasian wood, oak, but you know, uh, it's a prohibition of cutting oak in Georgia. So we can't produce the oak uh, barracks uh, from Georgian wood. At this stage, no possibility of, because we, we're actually there, not much oak is left in Georgia. Oh. oh yeah, not much more, more. Mostly the mountains, and now it's a very strong prohibition against cutting oak in Georgia. So we have to import these um, bar barriques from uh, France and from Italy. But again, we made several tests, and the best uh, the best for the Georgian wine seems to be the French oak. Okay. And uh, how many people uh, work at your winery? Uh, totally, we're about 100, about uh, 100. Inclu yeah, including staff, yes, including staff, guards, etc. because in vineyards, we have very big vineyards, and we have several posts to guard the vineyards, 
it's coming from the old times to have the guard because uh, all the times um, uh, we had uh, some uh, not a good possibility. Somebody could uh, steal the wine or grapes, so we had to protect it. But uh, from the old time, we have this guard and we still keep them. So it's uh, quite a bit of people. So. And from the other hand, we need to protect it from the animals because uh, when grape is ripe, a lot of animals, I mean, foxes, uh, jackals, and some anot dogs are coming in, intruding and eating and stealing our grapes. <laughs> and we need also yeah. to somehow to protect our, our um, yeah. uh, crop. I see. And I see. Uh, so, and in the vineyard, in the winery itself. So, uh, yeah, but you need to consider that 330 hectares. We need some uh, men running tractors, also viticulturists, and well, you know, this type of uh, this category, and also technical stuff, because the winery needs maintenance. We have. Uh, different professionals to maintain electricians, et cetera, et cetera, this type of stuff also. But it, in terms of winemakers, they're not much. We have um, five winemakers and uh, one is a Frenchman. The mm -hmm. others are cellar hands. So in the office, we are not much about 10 people. Oh, okay, okay. So a lot of work uh, in the vineyards and in the cellar. Yeah, yeah, absolutely, yes. Because our vineyards are still not very high technological, so we can't do everything by hand, uh, by machine. So a lot of uh, a lot of uh, maintenance done uh, by by hand, by hand labor. Yeah. yeah, yeah, I see, I see. And this is another part of your winery. This is not modern or European technology. Yeah, so absolutely, yes. Sure. This is old, old uh, version of uh, old technology. So old quavries where we produce uh, quavery wines in a traditional way. Uh, in the past, uh, we had um, actually uh, 4,000 square meters of quavery cellar. 4,000 square meters. It's actually a bit less than half a hectare. It's all underground. But nowadays we're left just uh, 40 quavries. And uh, we're producing wine in these 40 quavries, which are quite big in volume. Each of them is um, above uh, 2,000 liters. So totally we have around uh, 1,000 liter of uh, wine under the earth or underground, how we can call it. <laughs> wow, wow. We will talk uh, later about quaffery in depth, um, but uh, this is your bottling line. Yes. This is where you- Part of the on. bottling line, yes. <laughs> it's yeah. conveyor belt. We see now conveyor belt, belt right now. Yeah, and this is like uh, an ongoing process during bottling, I guess. Yes, absolutely, yes. Uh, so more pictures of the winery, top part of the winery. Yeah. Uh, this, uh, what we see, so this one of our wines from Condoli Vineyards, and this is part of our winery from the south, sure. And let's start with the first wine. So we have something in a glass and then we can talk more about uh, the grape varieties, uh, the vines and vineyard management. Do we all have the first wine? Okay. Uh, so first wine is um, Tsvane Kisi from Condoli Vineyards. Uh, Tsvane and Kisi are both Georgian grape varieties. Uh, Tsvane in Georgian means green, and the gr grape itself is has a green skin. And while Kisi uh, is uh, a bit different because the um, grape is a bit yellowish, and not quite, and with uh, certain spots, as you see on the picture. 
uh, from the aromatic point of view, uh, Tsvane is uh, more vegetal, more um, with uh, more floral aromas, while Kisi is um, uh, tends to go towards uh, fruity aromas. So we decided to unite all these two varieties in order to produce some kind of complex wine. This wine is a blend of two again, and it's produced in, um, in a very special way. So the grapes are picked separately and um, they, are, uh, they are not destemmed. They are, they are pressed whole bunch in order to get um, the best possible juice out of it. And then after fermentation, which takes place usually around, uh, goes around 16 to 18 degrees, the wine is blended and kept in stainless steel without any oak intervention. And during a few months, we mix the light leaves on the bottom with the wine, which is the process is called batonnage, in order to get the complexity uh, of the aromas. Uh, usually, uh, this is um, due to the uh, cells of the um, uh, of the um, of the fungus, no Marco. Yeah, you, you mean like the the, the, the dead cells of the um, cells. Yes, uh, which uh, which uh, transfers to the wine some kind of uh, uh, roundness, uh, and uh, it's a very good addition to the um, freshness of the wine and it gives some kind of complexity. Right now you're tasting 2012, and uh, 2018, excuse me, 2018, excuse me. Uh, now uh, here in Georgia, we have on sale already 2019. But 2018, uh, depending uh, how it is kept, uh, nowadays can have some uh, more mature characters as well. Because if you kept the wine in the uh, cold room around 16 degrees, so it should have should be very very fresh. Otherwise, if you kept it uh, at a higher temperature, it might have some more sweety notes along with the, with the freshness. Okay, so so it's a wine that you can drink young. Uh, um, yes, you can drink it young, but you know, I, I personally uh, prefer old wines and I usually drink it two or three years old. Okay. It's my personal preference. So it's the right time to drink right now. <laughs> Very good. Very good. So this wine is made with European technology. Absolutely, yes. It's with, with no oak. With no oak and uh, trying to protect the... Uh, wine from oxidation as much as possible. And okay. I would like to admit that the pressing takes place into the special uh, presses uh, into the um, nitrogen atmosphere, so to protect even the juice from oxidation. It's very, very important. Okay. So you will get the, the, the primary fruits uh, yeah. and aromas of the grape variety. It's like a reflection of, of the grapes. Absolutely, yes. Absolutely, yes. And I would like to admit that in this block where this Svane and Kisi are uh, picked, we, have the, uh, we have, have the green harvesting in order to reduce the grape quantity from 10 tons down to six, seven tons. Uh, and thus, we increase the quality, overall quality of the grapes. Okay. So that's a lot of uh, labor in the vineyard. Yeah, absolutely, yes. It's a lot of job, a lot of work.
Yes, yes. And so because of the batonnage, it's like mixing the dead yeast cells. Yeast uh, cells, absolutely, the, yes. We would do, yes, yes. You will get like a, a, a rounder body in the wine. Yes, rounder, yeah, rounder body, yes. And um, smooth filling, very smooth filling. This is very, what we wanted to achieve. Yes, yeah. Well, let's taste. Do we all have a glass? So what do you, what do you see? What do you smell? What do you taste? Greenish color, yes. It's 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 a very light color. It's like in exactly a bit greenish yellow, and you can see the viscosity um, of the wine. It sticks to the glass. Is that because of the batonnage? Yeah, partially, it's, yes, it's partially this, partially due to the alcohol, it's around 13 degrees of pure alcohol. Yeah. In these two Let aspects, yes. Um, some reactions, uh, almost uh, elderflower, almonds, um, smells like Riesling, the taste is completely different. Isn't that, um, what is it? Sana is um, every now and then compared to Riesling? Sana, no, no, no. Uh, no, no. Uh, Sana is very aromatic, but Riesling yeah. has specific aroma, which is characteristic just for Riesling. And ah, you okay. can't actually mix Riesling with something else, like Sauvignon Blanc. So they are very, very different. They have specific aromas. But Zwade is very aromatic, but it's quite different from those two varieties. Okay. Yes, you can find some uh, touch of Riesling probably in terms of aromas. Why not? Uh, uh, no, no, some people say like this, yeah, especially uh, who has experience uh, of drinking Riesling. But uh, in Georgia, not much people have experience to drink Riesling. <laughs> is there any... Riesling in Georgia? Uh, I don't think maybe there are some, but not much. Okay. Um, Eric says, reminds me of a Muscadet, Sèvres Aimé. And Sabine says, more like a Pionier, probably because of the full body. What do you think, Tura? Uh, again, you know, uh, we, we, we have uh, two different uh, grape varieties. Zwane with, with more um, vegetal and higher acidity. Mm -hmm. And the uh, Kisi with uh, more fruity and uh, full body taste. So it's kind of mixture of two. In addition, the batonnage. And we have this kind of very complex aromas, complex aromas and taste. And this full and smooth body. Yeah, 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 it is. It has a full body. And um, where are the vineyards of uh, the grapes? Uh, is it this? Um, these vineyards like, are in Condole village. Mm -hmm. It is um, the, the origin of uh, these uh, vineyards are dating back to 1752, where first these grape vineyards were named. Here you see our mm -hmm. vineyards. So this area, which is were famous from almost three centuries. And we have uh, several blocks of different blocks of uh, different grape varieties, depending on the soil. Okay, and, and what is the soil type of this wine? Uh, the, the soil type is a, is a light clay, light clay with uh, with stones, with stones, 
which is, and below we have the bedrock of um, limestone. And uh, that creates the um, quite a high pH around eight. And uh, this is, uh, this is just the soil. And okay. the exposition is, is towards the uh, north. It's not south, it's north facing vineyards. Inclination mm -hmm. about 8% towards the uh, river. And at the mm -hmm. end of the vineyards, you see the green line, which is actually is a tree line, which is actually is a river. In yeah. Between. The Alazani River. Alazani, yes. Yes, and you just says no stylag and it looks all flat. So do you have uh, vineyards on uh, slopes as well? Yes, we, uh, yes, it's, um, we have vineyards on slope. We planted it recently. Uh, unfortunately, uh, in this presentation, we have no photo of these vineyards. It's, they are on the opposite side of the Alazani. The, mm -hmm. These vineyards are, are on the right side of the river and the other on the slope are on the left side. Okay, oh, that's an interesting question. Pardon asked, what is the effect? Um, you have flatlands, what is the effect of that as opposed to south facing slopes? So this is north facing? South, south facing actually gets more sun. Mm -hmm. This is different. This is difference. So you have like more uh, ripe grapes, more sugar yes. in the grape. Or yes, absolutely. Oh, more early, early, early ripening, more sugar. And from the other hand, uh, the the soil is quite different from the left and right side of the rivers. As I told, mm -hmm. the we have a clay with stones and with very high pH on the left side. Of the river, or left bank of the river, we have a pH uh, around seven, even below the seven. So it's more acid soil, and with a very light uh, soil, uh, more sandy soil, uh, which enables the root to penetrate quite deeper. Here we have quite hard soil on the right and side. Yes. You have to irrigate. Yes, we do irrigate this vineyard. We started irrigation around four years ago. Mm -hmm. Because beforehand, before that, we never irrigated. But, you know, the climate changes uh, affected our climate, local climate as well. So we need to irrigate. Otherwise, we, we risk to lose the harvest and even lose the vines sometimes. Because... The heat waves are quite strong sometimes. It was not, not the case this year. This year was quite cool summer in our area. But uh, the year before was very, very hot. We had no rain almost two, two months. Wow. So we had to irrigate. Yes. OK, so climate change is becoming a serious problem for you as Absolutely, well. Absolutely, yes. Yeah, everywhere. Yeah. And do you have to uh, harvest earlier? Because of uh, garbage? Yes, 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 absolutely, yes. Uh, we usually, we, we, we sh now we start harvesting around 20th of uh, August. Uh, we used to oh. start, we used to start 1st of September, from 1st to 5th of September in early years. Now the wow. harvest have, have shifted around two weeks, 10 days. That's a lot. That's the same lot. happened in Burgundy. You know, you know this year, uh, they actually finished harvesting uh, the first half of uh, September, most of the uh, wineries. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. It's a general yeah. problem for everybody. Yes, it uh, is, unfortunately. Yeah. Um, some questions. Uh, Petra asked, are the grapes all hands-picked? 
If yes, yes how absolutely, many people yes. Uh, you know, grapes are hand-picked and they are picked in the boxes, in the small boxes. Uh, and how many people pick grapes? Uh, mm -hmm. Usually, uh, so average uh, calculation is like this. One person can pick around from 500 to 800 kilos of grape per day. Uh, um, yes, but yes. And depending on the uh, block, we, we invite a different amount of um, personnel to pick the grapes. So mm -hmm. I can't say exactly how many people pick this uh, particular block, but um, in case you have a special interest, I can check <laughs> records tomorrow and can tell you exactly how much. <laughs> okay. Uh, ba -ba -ba. I saw another question. Ah, Yelis, do you have problems with frost freezing grapes in spring? We sometimes we had uh, problems with uh, late frosts, mm -hmm. and uh, which actually damages the uh, young buds. Uh, the uh, last time we had this problem in uh, two thousand and seven. And from that on, we had no problem, any problem of late frost. Oh, okay. So your harvest was smaller than usual, I guess. In 2007, yes. Uh, you know, oh. when late frost hits at the early stage of bud burst, it damages the, the, young, the um, young buds. But you know, um, the plant has always have some kind of reserve, kind of slipping buds, which might emerge afterwards. So the result is not so devastating oh. as some can might consider. So we have some compensation. Like instead of 10 tons, we might get five tons like this. Mm, okay. And, but and, and still, and they... not good. Yes. Go ahead. And still, it's uh, quite quite uh, half the wind, uh, 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 crop, but anyway, it's something. Yeah, yes, it is. And um, do you have other hazards in the vineyard? Do you have like frost? Frost, hail, 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 hail most, most important. Yeah. Hail and uh, sometimes tornadoes. Oh, uh, no, kind of tornado. It's not tornado like uh, you can. Uh, no flying uh, cows or something. Yes, some, some kind of spinning wind, which uh, sometimes can damage. Mm -hmm. We had, by the way, uh, th there was some very devastating wind, which passed actually north, uh, southern part of our vineyards, just touching the just one block. Mm -hmm. and actually um, damaged a lot of grapes in Sinandali zone, but just mm -hmm. it, it uh, obliquely touched our vineyards. Ah. It's also, uh, in recent years, we have only the second one in the mm -hmm. last 10 years. So it, it's probably due to the climate change as well. Mm. Okay, and is it possible to use biological techniques? What? By what? Biological techniques, or do you have, is it like, do you have to use a lot of um, uh, pesticides or? Uh, we try much? to refrain from pesticides, but the our vineyards are not biological. So we mm -hmm. use some chemicals, surely, but uh, in very limited quantity. Okay. Uh, but uh, we, 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 try, we try to keep it as natural as possible. As you see, you see the grass in the vineyard. So we don't use um, uh, herbicides. And uh, mm -hmm. we try to be as natural, as close to nature as possible. But sometimes we need to heal, like, you know, with COVID, you can't uh, get along with just natural remedies, but eating just uh, onions 
will not help you. So you need to have something, you know? And uh, that's why vaccine. <laughs> so uh, the same with the vineyard. If you want to survive, you have to heal something with something. And yes. uh, sometimes we have to use some chemicals, surely. Okay, and another question, and then we'll go back to the wines. How far are you from the mountain range that we see in the picture? Mm. Direct distance from mountains, maybe five kilometers. Okay. From the end of the vineyard, maybe less. I would say rather less, yes. This is a picture of uh, that we made two years ago. Okay. In your vineyard. Okay. Um, so what do you think about the wine? Um, I saw a reaction of Hank, I thought it was Hank, who paired it with uh, Nick Stiani, the stuffed aubergine rolls with the walnut paste. And he says it enriches the taste of the wine. Yeah, well, I can imagine that. And yes? You know, this wine, uh, you know, the walnut sauce is quite strong. Uh, yes, it might be good with walnut sauce, but I would rather prefer it with uh, some poultry, this wine. Mm -hmm. And fish, fish would be fantastic, very good. And was uh, and as well as in, on its own, it's very good. Which one? On its own, just like on this. Its own. Yeah, just having a glass of wine, just in front of the TV in the evening, and you easily can get two or three glasses, no problem. <laughs> yeah, it's a very pleasant wine. It's a very yes. pleasant wine. It has this full body, but still a lot of freshness. I mean, I think it's for, for a lunch. It's, it's perfect. Yes, I'm pretty sure, yes. You know, we Georgians drink a completely different way wine than you do Europeans drink. So we have different attitudes. <laughs> so, uh, and uh, uh, Georgians never drink at lunch. Oh, <laughs> well, we, we need her. <laughs> we drink a glass of milk. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, like, you know, Italians, Italians, the French uh, always drink uh, during lunch. It's kind of two or three yep. glasses. They do. But in Georgia, yes, usually in the evening we drink. Yeah, we should do that too, drinking <laughs> during lunch. Okay, but uh, when I, sometimes uh, I also have wine in the, in the during the lunch. I love it to have two, two glasses like this. But you know, uh, the white wine, especially in Svanik, is yes, yeah, surely it's, it's um, very good during lunch time because it's not heavy. It's uh, no. still is full body, but it's very light and uh, easily uh, very palatable wine and uh, easy to drink. Yes. So let's go to the next one, but first we have to uh, talk about uh, this. So this is the, these are all crepes, crepes. They are all clay vessels used for uh, making wines according to the traditional Georgian uh, uh, wine making technique. Um, well, as you can see on the label, you can see like the, 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 the form of the coiffry. And um, they're all buried in the ground. I've heard that in the western part of Georgia, they store them in the woods. I'm mm -hmm. not sure mm -hmm. what. It is. Yeah, just, just not in the ground, but um, between, between trees. No, no, I don't think no? so. Maybe, maybe some kind of leg, legend. I don't know. Maybe. Okay, but, but I, you never see. We, we keep in the under in the in the soil in the under under the floor. Yes, yeah. this usual way how how we Georgians used to produce wine for centuries. Um, and uh, what I is very important for this type of wines. So it's very important, the food quality. It's much more important food quality 
rather than producing wine using European technology. Because I explain why. Because with this technology, you crush grape skins uh, with the juice and ferment them together. In case you have damaged food, so it can cause uh, off taste during the storage and fermentation. So while when you press out the juice, you have possibility to clarify and send clean juice for mm, fermentation. While during the uh, Georgian uh, way of produ production, you have no chance of separating juice or clarifying juice. So you should pick very good quality grapes in order to, that guarantees the better quality wine. This is very important. So with this wine, we usually try to collect uh, grapes by hand, by hand, and uh, using the sorting table to sort out the damaged food, and uh, then just crush into the query just um, best quality grapes. And they are stored there for three months. They ferment there. They undergo the secondary fermentation, like it's called malolactic fermentation, which means the transformation of malic acid into the lactic acid, which softens the wine. And later on, wine is uh, bottled and uh, it's 2017, yes. And uh, it has a darker color. It has um, phenolic, a lot of phenolic compounds from the skins. And actually we can't call it wine, white, white wine. It's amber wine or orange wine. <laughs> it, now this color is more like orange mm -hmm. for me. And yeah. again, mm -hmm. it's very traditional. And uh, in the villages, most of the people produce uh, just this type of wine. No European time, just this old fashioned way, uh, which we also try to produce. And now you can taste this wine. Yes, yes, it's quite amazing. So 8,000 years ago, people were making wines in these clay vessels. Um, and um, it's made from, um, well, it's clay. It's and you clay, have yes. All sizes, you have them like small and you use this like uh, vessels of 2,000 liters. So that's rather large. And uh, you have sent me a picture uh, with uh, some forms of Pevri during, um, yeah, during history. Yes. So has every region known their own shape of Pevri? Or uh, is it- The, the shape is uh, more or less similar, but the mm -hmm. neck is quite uh, different. Uh, while in my region, the neck of the uh, query is lower than compared to those one produced in Imereti, so in the Western Georgia. Western Georgia. Mm -hmm. So I don't think it can have much effect on the wine quality produced in the query, but it's the way how these masters used to make query in different areas. Okay, so you have crevery masters who make these creveries and they are all made by hand. Yes, absolutely hand. It's uh, kind of the uh, crevery is built uh, layer by layer and uh, it's a very long uh, and very labor intensive process. Okay, so it's not very cheap, I guess, to, to make wines in creveries, I mean, only the making of the crevery is a quite long process. Uh, yes, uh, producing wine in crevery is not easy and uh, you are not guaranteed that you get can get good quality because uh, you shouldn't forget that the crevery is porous and uh, these pores might contain some uh, uh, problematic issues like uh, microbes and uh, cause uh, different problems during the fermentation. So you have to sort out uh, crevries 
wine from creveries and uh, be very careful. Uh, because uh, in creverie, you cannot control the fermentation process. You completely are dependent on the nature. What nature decides for you, you have to accept it. That is very difficult and very, very challenging at the same time because it's absolutely natural process. Yes, yeah, so, yeah. Still, you know, well, sometimes we produce, sometimes we always produce side-by-side clothes, -side but these two wines are, might be completely different. Yeah, completely. So, and again, it's a winemaker's uh, technique and uh, choice how to blend them in order to make the kind of uh, uniform, uh, consistent uh, quality wine year after year. Yeah, 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 that's true. Now here we can see a crepery from inside. Um, so they put in uh, the crushed grapes with the pips and the skins. Um, even, I think that's all right. Pips, skins, it's not the skins. But some people used to put stems also inside. Okay. Stems. It depends on the winemakers. It's winemaker's choice. Uh, because with stems, you have a more uh, kind of harsh wine, more hard to drink, mm -hmm. with more polyphenolic and phenolic compounds inside. So this is not for everyone. So we try to produce the lighter versions of the Clary wine with uh, less disturbing for the taste and more acceptable for the modern customers and for everybody. Mm. Yeah, so the, the stems give like greenish tannins. It's more astringent. Yes, more astringent, absolutely, yes. And uh, needs more time for aging. Need maybe a few years to age to soften these uh, astringency down. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, sometimes it's not even reachable because it depends on the grape again. Mm -hmm. We are very much dependent on the grape quality. Yeah, I see. Um, in more so, extent than with normal con conventional wines. Yeah. And so you put all in, you put all in crevry and yes. then fermentation happens. Yes. How long does the fermentation takes? Uh, fermentation usually takes around 10 to 12 days. Uh, this is extensive uh, um, production of the CO2 with, which pushes up the grape, uh, grape skins. And mm -hmm. you need to constantly push them down in order to, to mix the skins with the wine in order to get the extraction. From the other hand, you need to push them down not to dry up the upper part of the uh, skins. Mm -hmm. uh, that might produce also some kind of unpleasant taste. It's a hand, hand job completely. And when the uh, uh, intensity of CO2 production uh, diminishes at the end of the fermentation, the skin, there's no pushing power from the below and skins mm -hmm. go down. And while going down, it clarifies the juice, uh, wine, actually wine. And at the end of the day, you have not day, but uh, months or two months, you have the clear wine. Yeah. So it's all natural. And it's do you all use, natural, yes. Do you add yeast for fermentation or do you use the indigenous yeast? Uh, we usually do uh, quite, a, it's a kind of indigenous yeast, but it's in different technique. So we pick smaller amount of grapes at the first stage, like if the crevice is 2000 liters, we pick around 100 kilos of grapes and crush into the crevice. And mm -hmm. the small amount starts fermentation and you create some kind of base for wine or grapes to come. And then after you crush grapes, when you have already strong fermentation there, then you crush a new portion of the grape and make it the tank full, the crevry full, and the grape, the rest of the grapes start fermenting automatically. Okay, so you use a kind of starter for fermentation. Yes, it's kind of starter, yes, starter or natural starter. Yeah, yeah, I see. 
So um, in the picture, you can see that the, uh, the cha-cha, do you call it, right? The pips, the skins, mm -hmm. like everything except the juice, they all, uh, they all sink into the crevry and then above you have like the wine. Yeah, sure. Sounds simple, but it's, it's quite a challenge because you need like the pristine fruit. It, it must be really good fruit, not damaged or rotten. Um, yes. And I think, um, yeah, hyg hygienic of hygiene is, is quite important of a crevry. And somebody asks, how do you clean the crevry? Uh, so, um, first of all, I want to tell you that crevry, uh, it's six months is occupied and six months is empty, waiting for the next vintage to come. So it's in our particular case, because we don't age in crevry. Uh, mm -hmm. We just ferment it to keep maximum until the March, April of the mm -hmm. next year. After crevry is emptied, we clean it with a special spray bowl, spray bowl, and suck out all the residues, all the water what is stays inside the crevry. And uh, we invented this special kind of uh, very uh, uh, small thing. We installed the uh, just um, computer cooler on top of the quivery, which constantly pushes the air directly into the quivery and always dries it out. If the quivery is dry, so there is no room for the production, production of the mold or some kind of infection. And this helps us greatly in terms of maintaining a clean quivery and um, uh, guarantees uh, from the uh, future of tastes in the wine. Okay. Quite in intensive to use crefferies, I guess. Yes, yes. <laughs> so, and and how, how many times can you use one crefferie? Here we can see a picture of, uh, of your Marani, your wine cellar yes. with the crefferies. Yes. Oh, how many years you mean? Yeah, yeah. Uh, we have quivers uh, which are uh, almost one century. Uh, still, wow. they are good. Yes. It depends on the um, uh, maintenance. It's very important to maintain it properly. Mm -hmm. Cleaning, mm -hmm. maintaining, and uh, this is very important because it's not normal clay vessel. Like you have the jar at home made of uh, clay. And if you keep it properly, and if you if you kind of wash it uh, all the time, and you keep it dry and clean, nothing will happen. So the same with crevry; it's a normal vessel. Yeah. And, uh, it, you just have to maintain it properly, and then absolutely yes. Hygiene is very very important. Yeah. In particular, uh, the food matching of this wine, I would like to tell you that this wine now is served with chicken, right? With or chicken. Not? With chicken, right? Yeah, well, if uh, people... You suggest, uh, you suggest the chicken, right? Yeah. But, you know, in Cajeti, in my area where this wine is produced, most of the people have this wine with uh, pork, uh, mm -hmm. pork barbecue. Okay. Pork and lamb barbecue. Uh, if you have a chance, uh, try it, or just fry on pan on the pan on the frying pan the pork or lamb, and it goes fantastically because it's kind of substitution, light substitution of red wine. Yeah, it is. You know, if with closed eyes, you might mix it uh, with red wine. So yeah, it's very good composition and. Uh, it's a very traditional in Cajeti to have the crevry uh, wine with uh, this type of uh, barbecue. Okay, well maybe, well maybe for a Christmas dinner. Yes, why not? Fantastic what idea. You... <laughs> yeah. What do you all think of this wine? Some of you already have 
tasted it. I mean, I, I love the color. As you say, it, it's like orange, amber. Uh, what do you say in Georgia? Do you call it amber wines or orange wines? We call it Crevrizuino. Crevry wine. Crevry wine. And Very it good. all explains everything. So. Yeah. <laughs> and what is uh, typical for Crevry wines? In, in, in taste mean? and smell and... Okay, yes. Uh, here you can find the more, more riper fruit, more uh, jammy, more fruit jam, then uh, it's less fresh, less fresh, but uh, it's uh, more uh, um, kind of, uh, uh, maybe kind of boiled fruit, uh, um, it's a kind of baked baked food aromas. More baked food are more aromas than you uh, compare to the white wines. So you tend still you have you do not have here cherry or um, uh, kind of raspberry or something like this like you have red wines. Still, it's based on the white wine and it's white wine aromas are more intensified and more deep and. You should consider that uh, acidity level here is much lower compared mm -hmm. to the European wines. So the wine feel, feels more wider, more broader, and more easy drinking. Yeah. Yeah, what you often see is like orange peel or uh, Earl Grey tea. It's like more mature, uh, matured um, characteristics. Dry tea leaves, yes, could be. Uh, here, um, nice blue cheese. Uh, <laughs> Stephen says, love this wine, a slight resemblance with white port, or are we swearing in the tree? <laughs> So can you compare it to a white pork, maybe? White pork? Port. Port, a white port. Okay. I'm not very good in port, so I can't tell you. I, I, I'm not a big specialist and I had just feel uh, and uh, I'm not, I can't tell you anything. No. Yeah, well, I think white pork has a bit more, uh, a higher acidity, more freshness. This is more uh, riper fruit uh, in it. I actually know a restaurant in Rotterdam. It's, well, for the Dutch people, it's called uh, Prins van Ter Breche. Um, well, now it's obviously closed, but uh, they also have uh, Georgian wines, crevry wines on, um, in, uh, on, on the menu. And um, they serve it in black glasses. So you cannot see the color of the glass and then they let them, um, they let you taste the wines. And yeah, and then it's always uh, very surprising what you think it is. Because as you say, as you say so, it's, it's not a white wine and it's not a red wine, it's something yeah, it's white with some tanning, tannins of a red wine, but very matured uh, fruit. Paul Carlson says, sherry, bright tea leaves. Yeah, I think so, yeah. But I, li I like it very much, this crevry wine. I mean, it Thank has you. everything you. that, that, uh, that you uh, may expect, ex expect from a crevry wine, but it's very... Um, smooth it's the tannins are very uh, pleasant it has body it has a uh, good balance nice acidity level and and quite complex as well and you and you shouldn't drink it too cold right absolutely yes it should be consumed at around uh, i would say 12 14 degrees maybe even 16 degrees uh, okay. While uh, while for the white wine for this Tuanakisi, I would suggest it eight degrees. 
Yeah. And do you also produce uh, unfiltered amber wines? Somebody asked mm, Yes, we produce, yes. Which one, um, which one is that? It's a trapezo. It's a trapezo um Zwane and it's a trapezo Ah. Um, Margret says, this is a gorgeous wine, Mr. Ramasashvili. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I do really appreciate your uh, words concerning my wines. <laughs> It's, I'm really happy to hear it because it's now, our creations and I'm really happy you appreciated it. Yes, it's, 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 I love them. I really love them. Um, what do you think of this wine? Well, Margaret says it's a gorgeous wine. Are you familiar with uh, amber, orange or crafty wines or is this your first time? Well, you're let us know. Me? You're asking me or no, I'm not, no, no. Not, not, oh. not, okay. <laughs> not okay. Okay. <laughs> Excuse me, because I was a bit surprised. Like your first time now. No, but let us know in the chat. Um, okay. And if you have any questions about uh, uh, this um, uh, way of producing wines, um, ask us. So then we got to that. Next one, and this is, uh, yeah, this is Tbilisi. I want to yes. talk with you about uh, the wine culture in uh, Georgia. So this is Tbilisi and the statue you see, that is um, Kartli's Dada, the, the mother of, uh, of Georgia, Georgians, correct yes. me if I'm wrong. And in uh, her left hand, she has a bowl of wine and in her right hand, she has a sword. And it's like, come in peace, welcome. And um, well, otherwise beware. So um, especially the bowl of wine, um, well, that says all, it's all the warmth and pride and um, hospitality. Um, I've been to Georgia for three times now. And yes, I mean, your people, you, you are so, um, um, so warm. I, I mean, you will, is, has everybody, has anybody been to Georgia? It's, it's amazing. Um, people are so nice. They will help you. Uh, you're always uh, a guest. They will treat you like a guest. Um, and isn't that a guest is a god of uh, a gift of God? I've read somewhere that if you have a guest in your house or country, it's very important to treat him well and serve him well. Absolutely, yes. You know, in Georgia there's a proverb. So, if you have a wine at home, you can receive guests because with the rest is no problem because you can ask neighbor or some other and you can have some food but the main thing is to have a wine and you wish to have the guest in order to sell this wine to the guest <laughs> this is kind of proper <laughs> not saying like this because okay. you know the man of the head of the family feels safe and proud when he has some wine at home because he's ready always ready to receive guests because he never thinks about the food because food is essential food you can find but good wine is very important so, <laughs> so okay if you have wine uh, at your home you're ready to to yes have guests welcome guests Absolutely. that's good yes. that's good um well maybe you can tell us about um well, typical consumption of uh, 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 wine consumption in Georgia. Um, well, I have uh, uh, sent all the participants like three uh, recipes of Georgian dishes for a mini supra. So maybe you can tell us about the supra. What is it? Uh, supra, as you see from uh, what is uh, from the presentation, 
the supra is uh, close to cover the table at the same time. Supra means the um, uh, table loaded with food mm -hmm. and uh, ready to serve the guests. Uh, and traditionally, uh, Georgian the table, uh, as I told, tell you this Georgian supra never exists without wine. And while you have wine on the table, you should have tamada, so toastmaster, the person who promotes, who is elected among the members of the table and uh, who is uh, given the uh, right to promote the first toast. And uh, there's kind of sequence of these toasts uh, from which we start or from which to end. A lot of mm -hmm. Georgian toasts. Mm. For me now, with, the, with this format, it's uh, quite di difficult to uh, tell you about different toasts. But uh, first thing. I have been a little bit because I had to say so and I heard it now. First toast around the Georgian table is for peace. Mm -hmm. It's very important because the peace is absolutely must to have in order to have supra. Otherwise, no supra has sense if you have, have no peace. And then comes the toast to um, family, to my parents, to kids, to country, and likes. Women, especially, absolutely. And um, I have, a, we have a lot of interesting toasts in our, on our website. If you can visit our website, we have around 30 different story toasts. Wow. Yes. And uh, you can find them and you can use them maybe sometimes. It's uh, the toasts that are related to some kind of legends. And it's kind of story toasts. It's very interesting. Okay. So we can use them for our, our Christmas dinner when we have our online dinner with family? Yes, why not? Why not? You can share this information to every people because it's, uh, it's free on our website. Uh, if you was, it was difficult to find it, so I can send you the direct link to you and you can share this information to others. Oh, yeah. Yes. Thank you. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Nein. Um, you can unmute it. Ah, Theo Janssen. Theo, how are you, Theo? <laughs> Fine. Ah, nice to meet you. Okay. Yes, great Very to see you. Very great to see you. Yeah. Uh -huh. He's I a really... great friend of Georgia and very, very great person. Yeah. I, I, I... Theo, nice to meet you. I'm really happy to see you. Yes. Fantastic. I. I wish I could visit I again. Yeah. How are you, Theo? We, we, we will pass. We will pass this COVID, and you'll be able to come. Yes, I hope so. Yeah. If I happen to be there, I, I wish to see you again and shake yes, your hand and sit you down. Definitely. That to to Great. share a few words and few toasts and to drink again as we used to have. As usual. Fantastic person. Yes. Great. Thank you, Theo. Thank I'm you. with you. Bye. I will tell something my Theo, Theo Janssen. He uh, started with importing wines uh, from Georgia and, uh, well, from Tilapi Marani as well. Volgens uh, mij is het een beetje als een, een been uit de lange dok. Theo is, ik zeg maar even Nederlands, hij is ook uh, ereburger van, uh, van Georgia. Hij is ook zo'n, ik weet niet hoe je het zegt in Engels, honorary um, civilian, ik weet niet. Yes, honorary, yes, honorary citizen of Georgia, yes. Yeah. Yes. He's, yeah. uh, he's the person who actually started promotion of Georgian wine. Yeah. He's the, he made the first steps to present Georgian, world to the, Georgian wine to the world. He's a very, very important person for Georgian winemaking and to promoting Georgian wine all over the world. 
Yeah. We yeah. all owe him a lot. We all, who are, uh, all Georgians and uh, mostly uh, the people who are in this business, because w with him, uh, he made a great job. Ah, thank you. Thank you. <laughs> thank you, Theo. Yes, it is. Yeah, it, 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 if it wasn't for Theo, we, we I mean, um, well, it's because of Theo that we went to Georgia like uh, six years ago, I think. We were planning to go to Indonesia for our holidays. And uh, well, Theo told us about Georgia, how lovely it was. And we, we, we already uh, knew his wines. And um, well, he convinced us, he, he, he sent us a list with interesting places to visit. And yeah, so now in Indonesia, we went to Georgia and uh, well, we love it. Um, we love it. So thank you for that. Uh, let's go back to the wine and food. Oh, what is the local food that you would pair with your wines? Hmm. Question of part. Um, you mean with this particular wine? With the quavery wine, you mean? With quavery wine? With local food. With your wines, yeah. Oh, well, lo let's, local food. So, what we have, our very traditional food is khachapuri. It's a kind of pizza, but it's uh, the uh, uh, cheese, Georgian cheese is wrapped inside the pastry. It's, it's inside, mm. not on top, but inside. And we have different versions of uh, khachapuri very many different in different regions we have different so the next is very important is hinkali which is a kind of a bigger ravioli uh, but a flat shape with a lot of wrinkles uh, and inside you might have the pork lamb or uh, just beef or mixture of them or even uh, nowadays we have uh, uh, hinkali from um, mushrooms and uh, with some vegetables as well. Uh, so this is very, very important things. Uh, very traditional for our place is uh, pork on uh, sticks, fried uh, barbecue, pork barbecue on sticks and lamb oh, yeah. as well. So it's and we have a local cheese made in my uh, mountains. It's a uh, sheep cheese, which is quite salty, but goes well with traditional bread, which is made in a kind of tandoori. Uh, we call it tone. Uh, it's a round shaped clay, uh, clay pot, which we, you, you um, put the... Uh, the wood inside and burn it and you get and you make the bread inside this round surface so the bread is special shape it's called shofis puri or dedas puri yeah. it so, and uh, this is all tradition so we have also uh, some uh, traditional food from west of georgia but when you're talking about the Kahuri, Kahetian wines, it's more related to our local food. So uh, you need to arrive and test this food in place and uh, test the diversity what we have. So it's very, very important. Uh, you should arrive. <laughs> Whoever have not been, but when, when the borders open with finishing of COVID, probably you have another chance to come and visit us. We'll yeah. be all happy to see you here. And sure, the way yeah. we can <laughs> taste all this food take it together, <laughs> different. And the main thing is that Georgia is um, not very industrial country in terms of uh, agricultural technology. And for this reason, the food uh, still have some natural taste. Uh, speaking about the, uh, let's take meat. The meat is mostly free range. Uh, made from free range uh, cattle, free range, there are free range pigs as well. The chicken also are free range. And the food taste is completely different. And uh, saying uh, about uh, the same, I can tell you about the um, vegetables, which are very, very tasty, especially tomatoes, are absolutely fantastic, killing. Yeah, 
Yes, so. it's really amazing. I have added some pictures of, uh, well, Supras we, we have had in Georgia. And, um, well, this was quite regular. I mean, everywhere where we, ha where we went, um, yeah, we, we sat down at tables uh, like this, like fresh food, fresh, fresh fruit, uh, vegetables, uh, meat, uh, all kinds of uh, dishes. It, it's really lovely. Yeah, all together. <laughs> all together, yeah, yes. all together. And it's it's really um, about generosity, abundance, and friendship. It's um yeah, well, looking forward to it. Oh, and uh, over there on the left side, you can see the uh, stuff Khali. over here. Yes, Khali. Yes, sure. Yeah, um, let me see, we have a question. Pardon asks whether you make your wine based on the local cuisine or international cuisine. Well, I think the, go ahead. Say it again, please, excuse me. Uh, do you make your wine based on the local cuisine or international cuisine? Wine made on local cuisine or international. We make wine on its own because uh, we, we can't make the wine specially for certain food. After we make wine, w w the wine shows itself for which cuisine it goes well. So mm -hmm. if I answered the question correctly, because we never produce the wine for certain type of cuisine. So this wine is kind of traditional and it fits well with Georgian cuisine. And when we try to create some different type of wines like Tsvane and Kisi or some other wine, which might be also acceptable for European palate or yeah. uh, for different cuisines. Yeah, 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 yeah. And your wines are quite popular all over the world, right? In, yeah. uh, yes, yes. Uh, we're, we're consistent sales, consistent growth in sales. Uh, yeah. And um, the way we uh, were very much appreciated among the, our customers all over the world. Nowadays, we sell in 20, 26 countries. Mm -hmm. So our, our wines are presented in, in more countries because we, uh, some local distributors sell also in different countries. So totally, we might be about 30 countries. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh, and Jeroen says that the cows, the Georgian cows really love the free way. They are not only free range, but they also love the free way. Yes, I know. Yes. <laughs> Sometimes they do. <laughs> when they are released in the villages, so especially in the west of Georgia, so they just uh, go out and uh, they walk freely, like in yeah. India. <laughs> yeah, I see. Shall we taste the last wine? Yes, why not? Uh, last wine is Mukuzani. Uh, Mukuzani is an appellation. Uh, it's an appellation on the right bank of Alazani. It's between the two cities, Gurjani and Tel Aviv, just in the middle. Mm -hmm. It's a um, slope. Uh, quite a steep, the best area of Mukuzani is a quite a steep slope and uh, it, it's um, uh, here we have um, the, 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 the Saperavi grows, Saperavi, and Saperavi um, grown in Mukuzani area um, produces the wine Mukuzani which is originally uh, was uh, used to be aged in oak barrels for three years. But nowadays uh, the rule does not exist anymore. So we need to keep this wine at least one year. Some age in oak barrels, some not. We do age in oak barrels for eight months. So this wine, particularly this wine from 2017, Again, has been harvested in Mukuzani area. It's a Sapiravi grapes. And it is uh, fermented in stainless steel tanks for 10 to 12 days. 
and after it's uh, transferred to oak barrels for eight months, and after that, it can be bottled. So it's um, Saperavi, whoever tastes Saperavi knows that it's a quite heavy wine, heavy red wine uh, with uh, a lot of tannins, a lot of body, a lot of uh, red, uh, black fruit, and a uh, touch of oak to balance, balance all this together. It's a very good wine. It needs to be aged. Uh, I prefer it to be aged at least five years, but it's three years old. After five years, it's getting absolutely fantastic. Uh, but uh, while being uh, three years old, it's a very good uh, pair for uh, steak, uh, for uh, meat, Mm -hmm. uh, for games, for red meat, also aged cheese. Okay. Now this Saparavi is it's it's quite a grape with a lot of uh, it's uh, it's a grape with quite a lot of color, right? It's not only the uh, the color is not only in the skin but also in the in the flesh of the fruit. Uh, yes, the color in the flesh is just minimal, minimal. Uh, it has just the viands, red, if you remove the skin from Saperavi grapes, yeah. you find the flesh which is actually white with some red viands inside. It's okay. not totally red, it's not totally tinturier, like uh, red flesh inside. It's partially red, I would say. Partially. Okay, yes. because the color is quite, uh, can be very, very um, opaque almost, very thick. Yeah. Uh, if you happen to taste a uh, few flights of Saperavi, you have manifest that your teeth are absolutely black. Mm -hmm. And uh, this is the uh, name Hawaii Sapera derives the name Saperavi, which means Saperavi, peri is a color. And saperavi needs, means that the thing which gives the color. So it's a coloring uh, grape. You can even yeah. paint with it. So. Wow. Have you ever tried it, painting with saperavi? Never. But I've heard some people do. OK. Hmm. Well, it's, I like this one. I mean, it's, um, it's, it's, it, it's, Full body, it has a lot of um, fruit. Um, it's acidity is, is nice as well, but the tannins are very rich, offers a lot of structure, but um, they're not very harsh or anything. They're quite, they're, they are present, but um, in a pleasant way. I find them pleasant. Yes, the you... dominant aroma in, uh, in this uh, wine is uh, cherry aromas. In terms of fruit aromas, it's, uh, for me, it's kind of cherry juice aromas. Yeah. Yeah. Also a bit plum. Y yes. Yeah. It's, uh, let me see, um, mm, smoky. Smoky. Uh, oh, somebody says, I have opened a Mokuzani yesterday and it's tasting great. Yeah, I can see why, yes. Saparafi is a superb grape and this wine is the best I have ever drunk, says Jan. And Farben says, Saparafi is my favorite grape from Eastern Europe and trust me, I have tested all over the world. That's true. <laughs> That's great. Yeah. Um, and Saparafi, is that uh, your, well, national grape? Is it like uh, the most planted grape of Georgia? Uh, among reds, yes. In general, the most planted is Cazzitelli. The white grape. 
quite great because in Georgia, people mostly drink uh, white wines, uh, white wines in Kahetian way, in Kavri uh, wines. And it's uh, much like the drinking red wine in uh, Ember color. So. Yeah. Um, oh, this is interesting. Jeroen says, in Tlavi, we had a sweet red wine at breakfast. Is that tradition? Where is that? Mm, sweet red wine is not For popular breakfast. in Georgia. It's mainly po popular in post-Soviet countries. And uh, we produce a lot of it to sell in uh, post-Soviet countries. But some other countries are also like this wine. And uh, so we sell quite a bit in different countries, say in Poland, in the United States. But I guess it's mainly consumed by the immigrants or people coming out to post-Soviet countries. Yeah. Um, yes, but it's not traditional for Georgians to drink sweet wine during the dinner, but some people do. Okay. Um, and you were talking about the... Uh, the uh, appellations, Mugusani is the appellation. Yes. So it has a different terroir than Sinandali or Naparoili. And Sabine asks uh, uh, what the difference is between Naparoili and Mugusani. So in both cases, we have the grape variety Sapteravi, but Naparoili is on the left bank. Mm -hmm. uh, of Alazani River, while Mukuzani is the right bank. Uh, Napareuli is more flat area. And as I told you, the soil is more sandy uh, compared and the acidity level is close to seven. So it's uh, uh, more acid. Uh, while uh, in Mukuzani area, the mm, soil pH is uh, about the eight. Mm -hmm. It's uh, the... Um, limestone is actually on the um, upper level of the uh, soil. Mm -hmm. So just below a few centimeters, you have the limestone here in Mukuzani. And uh, the uh, exposition again is different. Exposition is Mukuzani is toward the south. In Napareoli is to no, toward the, in Mukuzani toward the north. In Napareoli mm -hmm. toward the south. So this is different terroir, completely different terroir. And that's why the grape style a bit different. For me, yeah. Napareul is lighter wine, is not that heavy as Mukuzani. Yeah. Still, it's Saperavi. Still, it's Saperavi, so but it's different. It's like having uh, different wines in Bordeaux region, depending on the uh, area, depending on the river bank, et cetera, et cetera. Yeah, yeah, I see. Okay, and then the Kinsmarauli, that is the semi-sweet wine, right? Kinsmarauli is semi-sweet, made in Kinsmarauli area. It's Saperavi again, it's naturally semi-sweet. It yeah. should contain around uh, 40 grams uh, per liter sugar, natural sugar. And uh, the difference is that it hasn't got the malolactic fermentation, the, and that's why it retains very vivid, inky color. Mm. And uh, I would say it's quite a nice wine for desserts. Yeah, it's it's uh, um, it's one of our most popular uh, wines, Prince Marauli. Yes, for us as well. <laughs> it's best-selling wine. Yeah, yeah, yes, but it's it's it, I like it. With some dishes. I Why like. not? Especially with Asian dishes, it goes quite well. Yeah. Because its sweetness with some spice, it balances the spiciness, the sweetness, quite well. So, with Asian food, his marawal is quite good. And I would say that the same happens in China. In China, also, the his marawal is very, very popular. Hmm, okay. Well, here as well. And okay. very interesting question of Paul. Did Stalin ever visit the Marani in Talapi? If he ever visited, I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. 
no evidence of this visit. <laughs> Why are you asking this? Is because I'm not sure he ever been in Tel Aviv. He, by the way, studied in Tel Aviv. Oh. He, yeah, he studied two or three classes in Tel Aviv uh, first school. Okay, so it, it is possible. There is a possibility. But I don't think so. Don't think Marani existing by the time. No, 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 no. No, I don't think so. Yes, at least our Marani. <laughs> Okay. okay. Well, do you have uh, more questions for Zurab about this wine, about other wines, about Georgia, winemaking in Georgia, or maybe you want to share your thoughts about uh, the wines? Please let us know. No, nothing. Well, in that case, oh, wait. Oh, whoa, whoa, whoa. Um, a perfect match with, um, uh, uh, this, is, this is going very fast now. Uh, <laughs> oh, wow. Uh, when will this beauty reach its uh, full potential? I think uh, in five years. Five, five years, years because I love Ace Bukuzani is absolutely fantastic because yeah. it's not so concentrated as Condoli. Mm -hmm. Again, in Condoli you have much more darker food because the uh, firstly Condoli we uh, the yield is quite low compared to this uh, wine vineyards, and. Uh, while you have the black fruit in Condoli, here you have very, very dominant cherry. And it's very, very interesting. If you keep two years more, you will get a very, very good wine. Okay. So buy this wine and store it in your own cellar. Yes. <laughs> Sorry, how, how do we sell, store it? Store, store it in your own cellar. So you you yes, you, buy it, yes. then you keep a, a box of the wines, or for over a couple of years. Yes. By the way, recently I bought for my house the uh, uh, wine refrigerator, just for storage of the wine, mm -hmm. uh, because uh, in our cellar we have a temperature controlled cellar where you we keep the temperature around seventy degrees all the time, mm -hmm. but. Uh, I needed to have for my home to keep my own collection of the wine. So now I have it. So <laughs> I'm so, really very happy. So you are ready to uh, to welcome some guests. Absolutely, yes. <laughs> I have good refrigerator. I have wine. So welcome. Welcome. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, maybe next year. Hopefully next year. Well, I hope so. Yeah. Uh, one question of Jeroen, do you have an even better red wine? Uh, yes, uh, well, we, yeah, but different, you know, again, I would say that uh, wines are all, uh, all different and depending on the choice of the customers, it might be good or better. So in terms of price range, Price-wise, yes, Condoli Safarabi is higher in price and uh, more concentrated, I would say. Yeah. And even more concentrated, you have Satrapezo Safarabi. Satrapezo line. Yes, Satrapezo line, yes. Okay. Okay, well, Pardon says, I think you have been true to yourself as winemaker and a region. Thank you for being resolute to your origins, to your origins, and we will keep drinking your wines. I think anyone who wants to invest in wines, they should invest in yours. Thank you. Fantastic decision. Fantastic. <laughs> Thank you so much. Okay, Zurab, then um, I would like to thank you very much of your, um, for your time. And um, I have learned a lot about Georgian wines and your wines. I th think we, uh, we all learned a lot and we have tasted 
very good wines. So thank you for that. Thank you very much. I do really appreciate your presence at my first online tasting. And uh, I hope you enjoyed it. And uh, I wish to um, I wish to meet you in person when it's really possible. And uh, come, we're happy. So one more thing, so I even can receive you at my home because in my home I have now fridge. I have good <laughs> wine at perfect temperature. So welcome. Yeah, and you're a good company, so yeah. <laughs> Let's hope next year, next year. Okay, thank okay. you. Okay, oh wait, we have a request of um, uh, Arden. Uh, he says, well, he asks us to all raise a glass. Let's raise a glass now and take a selfie. Well, and then in, in, in um, Georgia, we say Kaumar Jos, right? Absolutely, yes, Kaumar Jos. Which Gaumar means Jos. cheers. Kaumar Jova. Kaumar Jova, Kaumar Jos. Kaumar Jos, everybody. Kaumar Jos. Thank you for joining us. I hope you enjoyed it. Well, now, now we have to move it. Pardon, are you taking a selfie of us? <laughs> Uh, I hope you all enjoyed it, uh, the wines and uh, the stories behind the wines. And but I also would like to know who made um, a mini supra. Ah, I see some empty dishes. Yeah, very good. How was it? Oh wow! Uh, I I am taking a selfie, uh, Ria. Uh, <laughs> Uh, oh, camera Jos. Yes, there we go. There we go. There we go. Thank you very much. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Cheers. Sante. Okay, well, thank you very Cheers. much. For Cheers. I hope you love the dishes. I hope you love the wines. And, uh, well, I hope you love the yeah well this friday evening another one with our semi lockdown um i think we will do a, another online tasting again i don't know when maybe between christmas and um uh, new year's because we have to do something now right so um well if you have ideas let me know and we will invite a very interesting winemaker again, and um, we will taste wines together and maybe uh, eat something together. I see some some empty plates. Must be very delicious, all. <laughs> okay, so Supra, our mini Supra was magnificent. Supra was great. Goodbye, everybody. Good night. I really enjoyed being with you. Thank you so much. Bye, Madlova. Thank you, thank you so much. But you know, I, I online meeting is good, but in line, round the tail, much better. Real life is better. <laughs> in line. <laughs> thank you. Okay. Okay. Good night. Thank you so much. Keep well. Bye, Surab. Hi, bye, bye. Time difference between Georgia and the Netherlands. It's uh, I think it's three hours later there, so so probably it's time for for Zurab to to go to bed. <laughs> okay, well, how uh, did you enjoy this session? It's really nice. Hello. Very good, very good. If you have any feedback, please let us know. I loved it because we had the preparations for the food and, you know, all the suggestions for how to store the wine. <laughs> so, yeah, thank you. You're welcome. Thank you. Thank you. Well, Okay, we like it very much.
and we were back in uh, Georgia. Next year. Next year we Next go back. Year. Yes. And we love the um, country. We love the wines. And the food. And the food. But yeah, I love it too. It was a great evening. Thank you. Thank you too. Thank you too. Ja, toen ik alle foto's aan het bekijken was, op zoek naar uh, zoekgraas, kreeg ik alleen maar trek en, en eigenlijk nog meer zin om naar Georgië te gaan. En, nou ja, hopelijk volgend jaar weer. En misschien komen we elkaar daar wel tegen bij Zoerap aan tafel. Hij heeft genoeg wijn, hebben we net gehoord, dus wie weet. Het wordt tijd voor wijnreizen. Toch? Ja, 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 ja. Eerst, eerst die lockdown. Uh... Ja. <laughs> ja. Oké, okay, nou, als jullie nog uh, opmerkingen of vragen hebben, horen we het graag. Uh, je kan het op de mail zetten, je kan het ook nu laten weten. En, uh, dan zien we jullie graag de volgende keer weer terug. Heel veel dank voor jullie uh, aandacht en a- aanwezigheid. Tot de volgende keer. Hallo. Eén, twee, test, één, twee, test. Rasputin, Rasputin. Eén, twee, drie. We gaan naar de maan, we gaan naar de maan. Eén, twee, drie. Horen jullie mij? Testing, testing. Wie was dat nou? <laughs> Welke wijn vonden jullie het lekkerst? Ik de eerste. Nani? Jules? De derde. Maar de eerste. Oh, dat, ja. En de tweede ook niet. Allemaal goed. <laughs> Totaal verschillend. Ja, ja, precies, precies. Ze zijn echt totaal verschillend. Het, uh, ja. ja, en, 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 en zoals Surap ook zei, ze, ze zijn ook niet te vergelijken en ze zijn elk gewoon goed. Ja. Het is niet dat de een beter is dan de ander, gewoon alle drie gewoon heel goed. Ja. Ja, mooie selectie dus. Ja, mooi. Leuk dat je erbij was. Ja, nou ja, en uh, volgend jaar naar Georgië, Jules? Nou, misschien. Dat zou wel leuk zijn. Ziet er wel heel mooi uit. Ja, is een van jullie wel eens in Georgië geweest? Ik ben vorig jaar in Georgië geweest. En ook in Tel Aviv. En ook bij de Marani. Oh, wat leuk. Wat ja. leuk. Ja. ja. Heb je goed gereisd in Georgië? Uh, Tbilisi, uh, heel veel historie in Tbilisi gezien, ook in Gori geweest, hè, de stad van Stalin, en in ja. Telavi uh, geweest. En uh, in de omgeving van Telavi heb je ook een paar uh, nou, fantastische kloosters, hè, kerken, um, ook die, uh, hè, die, 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 die kruiken zie je liggen overal bij, uh, nou, bij, 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 bij kloosters. Uh, het geloof hè, wat beleden wordt. Daar is wel heel bijzonder om dat te zien. Hè, eh, ook een christelijk geloof, maar anders dan dat we in Nederland uh, kennen. Ja. En uh, de zuidelijke Caucasus, hè, die zagen we op de foto. Dat is toch wel indrukwekkend. Zeker als je weet dat aan de andere kant van die Caucasus, ja, Tsjetsjenië en Dagestan ligt. Nou, uh, 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 ook al rode gebieden voor de COVID-situatie. Ja. 
en uh, erg vriendelijk. Erg vriendelijk.